Hello everyone, I'm Ann Baldwin and I work with the folks at the Connecticut Association of School Superintendents as well as the Connecticut Association of Boards of Ed and I'm pleased to be joined today by Dr. Janet Robinson who's in her fourth year as superintendent for Stratford Public Schools as well as Clarence Zachary and Clarence is the COO Chief Operating Officer of Stratford Public Schools. And we're here, folks, to talk about the realities of the 2017-2018 budget. And I appreciate this conversation because we need to set the record straight on some misinformation that is out there and really helping residents of Stratford and your entire school community understand the nuances and, more importantly, the hard work that goes into planning a budget. So let's start really from the beginning. Um, how is the budget process? How does that go down? We, uh, we start in October and we meet with, uh, we have a zero-based budget, so that means we start from zero and we meet with every principal, every one in charge of a program and talk about what their needs are for the next year. So Clarence and I are in meetings throughout the year doing this. And then once we have what their needs are, Clarence puts it together and it's always more than we know we could ever ask for. So then we have to go back through and uh, set priorities mm -hmm. and start eliminating some of those requests to determine what, which of those requests are really, could, could maybe be put off a year and which ones are absolutely essential. It's not want to's, but what do we have to have for the next year? And from there, we try to get it down to, uh, whittle it down to a size that we think would be um, acceptable to the Board of Ed. And then we go to the to our finance committee of the Board of Ed. This year, I believe we had seven budget meetings with them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not just board members on that finance committee. They're also members of the community. They're there. And they're very astute. Uh, some of them have been on the finance committee for a number of years. So they are very good about going through things like with a fine tooth comb. Mm -hmm. And um, so we had seven meetings. Uh, they finally came to uh, an agreement on a percentage they thought was reasonable. It then goes to the Board of Ed for approval. In this case, it had to go back to the uh, Finance Committee again for another meeting to, to, to really massage some of those things. Finally, it will go, once the Board has approved it, it will go to the Mayor, and then from the Mayor it goes to the Town Council for approval. So you can see it's quite a complicated process. So Clarence, let's cut over to you now as the COO, um, which you know, COO of any company is you are in charge of the financial, you know, security and looking out for the best interest of your school district. So let's talk a little bit about the big picture. Let's talk about in many districts they have what's called a pie. So why don't you explain to us what this pie consists of? Well, it, it's a, a basically if you look at the pie chart. Roughly 77% of our overall budget is salaries and benefits. Those are things human beings, their health insurance, their uh, retirement for non-teachers and things of that nature. So you start every year knowing that 75 to 77 percent of the budget is untouchable unless you cut staff. Mm -hmm. uh, the remainders are things like transportation, uh, school supplies, building repairs. Uh, we have a big driver. Most board of ed budgets is special education costs, which generally represents 20 to 25 percent of a budget in most school districts. So you've got this pie, and let's just say for the purpose of this conversation, the recipe for the pie is pretty much the same every year. You've got constant costs, but then you've got variables. And you mentioned special education costs. Why is that considered such a variable? Well, for instance, we have a situation in Stratford where we have a set number of special ed students we know we have. Mm -hmm. But every year we get a new group of students that for whether they moved into town or the state places them in our district, that we don't budget for for this year we're we have 33 additional students special ed students in our district that arrived after october 1. Mm. those 33 students have translated to a cost around a million dollars that we didn't budget for because they weren't here when we did set the budget right. so we on a constant basis have to sort of juggle with this sort of we must serve the needs of these children but we didn't plan for these children right. to be here you, so. had, you had no way of knowing that they'd right. be moving into your district and the average cost of one special ed student in most districts is well over a hundred thousand dollars you can anywhere from 75 to hundred thousand dollars right. easy right okay so let's talk a little bit about some of the myths that are floating out there that you know student population has decreased you've got declining enrollment is that true or false oh it's absolutely false um, we are one of those districts in connecticut that are increasing uh, I refer to some of our elementary is, is in essence a churn where we have kids that move in and we have kids that move out, but the net is still up. 
so uh, overall, and of course, Clarence keeps tight control of the enrollment numbers, but overall, we have definitely increased. Okay, so enrollment has increased, and also your geographic and your, your, your profile has changed too, Clarence. Talk a little bit about that. You know, that's the other component that a lot of people don't realize in Stratford is that, you know, the, the number of minorities has, has increased, and really your student population, the face of that has changed. Since Dr. Robinson and I arrived in the summer of 2013, our demographics have changed on a consistent basis. We've been generally increasing in our minority population about 2% per year. Our free and reduced lunch population has been going up 1.5 to 2% per year. Uh, we currently have over 49 different languages spoken in the district, wow. so we have a lot of students who don't even speak English. Uh, so trying to address the needs of this varying group of children, it's somewhat difficult and it takes resources to do that. And you talk about resources, and Janet, as we mentioned at the top of this program, you're in your fourth year now as superintendent, and great strides have been made in education there. Let's talk a little bit about some of the test scores and some of the measurements that have improved. And then also in your budget, you've got an increase of some supplies that some folks are questioning, but how can you teach without the tools? Right, let me deal with the, the supplies issue first. Um, I, I will say to you that when we came in, we found that at the elementary level, not only was there no math program, but there was really one math book per elementary classroom. One. One. So that was startling. Uh, so we have had to adopt new programs and put things in place. We have done a lot of very strategic planning to increase teachers' ability to be able to teach the, the, the students that are coming in, that many of these students are high needs, and we want them all to be successful. For the very first time now at our, at our mid-year testing, we, are, we see that we've turned the corner. It's very exciting mm. because at this point, we have a, a fewer students that are below the 25th uh, percentile, uh, at, at least 150 students that are no longer below the 25th percentile. But additionally, we have over 200 more, or excuse me, 200 more points on um, their growth in math. Wow. in the elementary level. Additionally, we have, um, we, we have students who are now uh, exceeding like 92% of our kindergarten students in math are uh, pro proficient or exceeding, which is we've never had before, which mm -hmm. is wonderful. And our first graders, we have 86% that are proficient or exceeding wow. in, in math. So we're seeing reading scores performing very well, and we're seeing math scores performing very well. So we feel like we've turned the corner and the things we've done very carefully, very strategically are starting to pay off. We really want to continue this work because we are seeing the achievement gap is narrowing and um, we know what we're doing is working. And if I might, I deal with the operational end of it, but last year we made a strategic investment in math coaches. It was a lot of discussion and back and forth negotiation about getting those math coaches, but those math coaches were put in place to try to achieve those results that Dr. Robinson is talking about. And we, so we, these results, we've seen only six months of them being on the job, or uh, seven of them being on the job. One was already there. We had one the year before. But those type of long-term investments are what brings the results that Dr. Robinson right. is speaking about. And you've made those investments, and you've got proven results from that. So to have those resources pulled back when you have to look at where the you know, it's not even fat that can be cut from the budget at this point. So let's talk a little bit about the, you know, the elephant in the room, if you will. Because when you look at the pie, a big piece of that pie is salaries, teacher salaries and administrative salaries. Um, you know, it's a competitive market out there. You want to attract good people. And Stratford, I, from my personal experience, is not an inexpensive place to live. So talk about that. And, and how do you justify that big piece being, you know, attributed to salaries? Well, it, it, it is a people business. Um, the relationship between a teacher and a student is one of the most important things we have going because that relationship is what's going to help these academics work. And so we consider that very important. We're very choosy about who we, we select and bring in. Teacher salaries have gone up 7% over the last few years, um, which is not great but in, in terms of what, what's happening in other places. And our administrator salaries have uh, risen about 6%. Um, very interesting enough, the, the projection for the upcoming administrator uh, agreement for next year, they will have a 0%. So I don't know how you can get much lower than that. I don't either. So where are we at today? Um, Clarence, you've got a, a new document that's been put together. You know, Janet talked earlier about how it's got, what the process is that you go through. 
So what is the budget? What does it look like today? And um, is it pretty lean and mean or is there room for movement? Uh, it's pretty lean. It's just, for example, Dr. Robinson proposed to the board a budget that was in excess of four point, around 4.8 percent. The board uh, has cut that down to a 3.47 percent. If we were at status quo, basically we added nothing, we'd be at 2.65. So you're talking about a 0.82 difference above status quo. So I don't see how you can get much leaner than that. Um, the overall budget the, bo the uh, board has proposed is $110,497,927. It's a 3.47% increase. That's just slightly above CPI. What's CPI? Consumer Price Index. It's, you know, mm -hmm. what the government uses for wage increases and things of that nature. If I can just add to that, too, so people understand, when he talks about the status quo budget, we're talking about adding nothing to the budget, just the cost of... The salary Business increases. as usual. Yes. Business as usual. Yes, there's no nothing added. No new staff. It's just. Mm -hmm. So that right there is, uh, if we go below that, then we obviously have to make cuts. So I, I guess my question is, you know, where's the pushback coming from, and you know, what do you want people that are watching this program to to really understand? Because you're in a real tough situation right now. Uh, I think that I think a really big thing is to understand that we are beginning to be successful. And um, to do that, this impacts kids. We have about, we're responsible for over 8,000 students. And um, seven, over 7,000 are in our schools. And to have those students be successful, um, our future, we need to continue on what is showing to work. We aren't asking for the sun, the moon, the stars. We are asking for a budget that continues the growth that we have. And to do just a just a, a no, no addition budget is still going to be over 2%. So that's what people have to understand. So if, if, if folks want to go to a 0%, they need to understand that teachers have to be cut because you can see from where our money is, we don't have a lot of discretionary income. So, and you're unique in Stratford in that this doesn't go to a vote. Right? This doesn't go to referendum as it does in a lot of school communities. So it's really up to your town councilmen who've said that they want a flatline budget, right? Well, some have. Some have said they want a flatline budget. All right, we won't, we won't brush the brush over everyone. So a flatline budget, I, know, I watch enough ER to know that if you flatline, you're dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate to draw such a strong analogy, but are we far from that? Well, a 0% increase will be very, very, will be a tremendous hardship. When you look at um, a zero budget, that means that we will have to figure out how to cut 2.8 million out of the budget. That's a lot of teachers. And the thing that Dr. Robinson referred to, status quo, nothing new, just business as usual, our budget goes up $2.8 million. So to be flatlined, you've got to cut 2.8 out. So that means we can't cut transportation. Those the kids are still there. They need to ride the bus. The only places we're left to cut are salaries, student activities, or instructional supplies. Those are three options we don't find very tenable in regards to. So either sports programs, drama, band, something gets cut, salaries. Because remember, it's 2.8 million dollars to get to zero. Mm -hmm. To get to zero. zero. 2.8 million to get to zero. Yes. Right. And you talk about cutting some of those programs extracurricular, and I've seen in other districts in my work with CAVE and CAPS that sometimes that's what it takes to wake people up and get them involved and let their councilmen know that, you know, we need to stay at least status quo, folks. Well, here's the thing, Ann. Student activities is only 1.5 million in its entirety. So if you can cut student activities in its total, you still doesn't. it still doesn't cover it. So it oh. means there's going to be teachers that have to be let go mm -hmm. in order to achieve a uh, zero percent budget and there goes all the gains that you've made in right. student achievement class, sizes, class increase. sizes increase so let's talk a little bit about the another myth that already some folks out there have somehow mysteriously calculated the fact that you're going to have a budget surplus at the end of this year and i'm not sure what month it is but we're not even close to the end of the year how can that be well first of all and it's illegal in the state of connecticut for any board of education to have a surplus it's illegal to carry over any money to the new year and it's illegal to have a deficit you can only spend what you've been appropriate, and you have to spend it all. If you don't, there are penalties involved from the state. We, since we've been there, we've spent 99.9% .9 of our budget consistently. We try to be very efficient about our expenditures, but there is no surplus. We have some available budget right now because we haven't finished a year, but we already know what those 
that money will be expended by the end of the year because we still have ongoing invoices that are coming in. We haven't gotten to the fourth quarter yet. And we're speaking with Clarence Zachary. He is the COO of Stratford Public Schools and Dr. Janet Robinson, superintendent. You know, it's one of those things like when you do your household budget, right? You need to give some wiggle room because you, you've got to expect the unexpected. For example, I just had a tree come through my house last week. Reality. So, you know, you've got to have that little bit of cushion. But you talk about student population in Stratford is not declining, is not diminishing, and you don't know what kind of student population you're going to have coming into your district. You just can't, you don't have a crystal ball. And isn't that part of the challenge and part of the reality that people need to understand? They do need to understand. And, and not only that, but the children, many of the children that are coming in have had multiple moves before they arrived in Stratford. So we consider those students needing a lot of support in order to be successful. And that's, that's the thing that, that people have to understand. That doesn't, uh, you can't do that magically without resources. And the one thing that uh, some people in the community talk about, you know, are, they talk about metrics, so your performance. So we've sort of drilled down and we see students that have been with us since the beginning or outperforming the quote unquote metrics. What brings our numbers, our scores down is when you average them together the kids who just showed up or haven't been with us the full time, the numbers decline. So we have to devote resources to those children who are too new to this to get them to caught up to the level where our students have been there with mm -hmm. us since the beginning. Yeah. It's like a continuum of care. If exactly. you've got them in the beginning, you see them through the end and then on to the schools. And right. I know, notice that a lot of your graduating students are going to some fantastic schools. Um, two of your, your board chair students um, you are bo Harvard. both going to Harvard. I mean, that speaks volumes to the work that you're doing there. So that makes sense as well. But, you know, the other component here is that, you know, some of your detractors say that there's no oversight, that you folks just do this in a vacuum. And, and I know that that's not true. So let's, let's share the reality for those folks. Well, first of all, we, the, the budget goes through this scrutiny, incredible scrutiny with the finance committee. So just building it is, is a lot of scrutiny. Uh, the other thing is, is every month the board's finance committee meets and reviews what's going on with, with the, Mr. Zachary in terms of the, the finances for that month. Everything is discussed. Everything is open. I mean, anyone can take a look at this as a public document. The other, th our feet are also held to the fire for student performance. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of, people keep asking about return on investment. Yeah. Well, we now can show concrete evidence there is a return on investment, and we want to continue that return on of investment. Of course you do. <clears throat> so. And then to your, to sort of elaborate on your question, people talk about oversight. We are part of the town of Stratford, so we have oversight from the town of Stratford. We're part of the town's audit. We're also part of the Connecticut Department of Education, so we have oversight from the state. So we end up having two audits per year. The state audits us and that audit is performed by the Department of Education and Office of uh, uh, Management and the town. So our staff ends up spending August through December dealing with audits. And then they stop and then we get back to our normal business and we sort of re reset the clock and we do it all over again. Right. So it's twice a year we, we go through these audits and we've never had any issues from either one of the auditors that have been to see our and check our books. So the bottom line is, where are you at today, and what is it that folks out there watching this can do? Because let me reiterate, this does not go to referendum. Uh, they're really, the folks don't really have a voice in this. It's up to your council. So what happens now? Well, people need to understand their council is really uh, answerable to them. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, they're elected officials. They are elected officials. So um, what we want the people of Stratford to recognize is, to, is that it's important at this point, this is a critical juncture, that we continue to build our schools. And we, we really urge people to talk to their, their representatives on the council to support uh, a budget that makes this viable. A zero budget will not make the schools viable. And I, what I've said to parents, um, I said this repeatedly, these are your children. What do you want for your children? Mm -hmm. Dr. Robbins and I will execute whatever budget we receive. Depending on what we receive, you may not like how we have to execute it, but if you want it a certain way, you have to go out and advocate for your children. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And don't wait till the final hour. I mean, you can have a voice. You know, school board meetings are open to the public. Right. There's public comment. Um, that's Town a great council opportunity. Town council are... meetings are open to the public. There's public comment. So, you know, it's easy to sit back and criticize and be, you know, Monday morning quarterback. Right. But now's the time to really get involved. And as, as Dr. Robinson said, 
to contact your um, councilman and let them know that you, you want to at least maintain status quo and you can't look at any further cuts because it's just going to, uh, and is this not such a great pillar in the community? Public education, whether you've got kids in the system or not, it's what your community right. is, is known for and you don't exactly. want to let that get away from you. So any final words or anything else that we didn't cover that you, it's important for you to mention? Well, I think you, you covered a, a number of very good, good points. I think the, the main thing I really want to reemphasize is that we're making progress. This is, things are, are moving uphill, we're on a continuum of, of success, um, and it would be, oh wow, it would be such a shame if we pulled the rug out from under that. It would be tragic, really, because the children would be the ones that end up suffering. Absolutely. Well, I think that, that is a great wrap, and, and again, if you want for more information on this, uh, remember that it is on the Stratford website. All these pie charts that we talked about, while they've been incorporated in this program, all these documents and all these things are available on Stratford's uh, website as well, which you see um, in front of you. So go there, educate yourself before you uh, second guess what is really being done in this public school system. So thank you both. I want to thank you very much. Clarence Zachary, COO of Stratford Public Schools, and Dr. Janet Robinson. Thank you. You know, continued success. And I know it's not always easy, but hopefully this has helped speak to some of the myths out there. And I want to thank all of you for watching this program.